this issue, I think, I don't know if it's because you and I are recognizing it more or if it's just because it's more common. Maybe it's a combination of both. But, you know, I see so many issues where people start out with a digestive problem. Like they'll complain about stomach pain or cramping or diarrhea or constipation, maybe some skin issues, maybe some mood issues, anxiety, depression, fatigue. And then all of a sudden, histamine comes into the equation and people start realizing, wow, I'm actually allergic or I'm having these sensitivities to histamine rich foods, like maybe avocado. That was a big one for me. I would eat avocado. I'd get a headache from it. Then I learned about histamines. And sure enough, when I went low histamine, a lot of my symptoms resolved. So I think this is an important piece of the puzzle, especially uh, depending on when people are listening, things are starting to bud and bloom. And so people may be reacting to outdoor allergens, pollutants, pollen, et cetera, things blooming. I think it's because their bucket is already so full because of gut and the histamine producing bacteria that now they're reacting to the outdoor environment. So people go to the ENT, they jump on the allergy med, but that's not necessarily the root cause solution. 100%. I see it all the time where, you know, you got patients that go to, you know, the conventional doctor like, oh, I have mast cells. And then they're just basically managing that patient with a lot of fancy antihistamines, um, different things like that to kind of decrease the ability to either make histamine or help your body kind of degranulate it or break it down. And they're like, well, this is, this is what I have. And they're so focused on the actual diagnosis, like the diagnosis is its own entity where the diagnosis, I always tell patients, is just a manifestation of a lot of upstream issues working their way down. And so it's kind of like you have all these systems that are out of whack, whether it's gut, gut bacteria. And we know, for instance, that there's different bacteria when overgrown can drive histamine. You were mentioning that. Morganella, Klebsiella, um, Pseudomonas, Citrobacter, Proteus, these are all bacteria that are common like in SIBO and just in general dysbiosis, that these bugs can actually produce a lot of the histamine. And then, of course, if your gut's inflamed, you're eating lots of processed flours, acellular carbohydrates, that's going to feed a lot of these things. And then, God forbid, you come in there and you have some antibiotics over the course of your lifetime, maybe more than you should. Now you have this perfect storm of like processed foods, you have antibiotics, maybe you come in there and you have a lot of glyphosate and Roundup exposure, and now that whacks out your brush border, that creates rebound overgrowth as well. Maybe you had some mold exposure, now you're overly stressed, you have low stomach acid, low enzymes, low bile salt. So you can see how this, this storm isn't just like this, oh, I just have a Zyrtec or an Allegra or a Pepsid AC deficiency. It's like, no, 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 that may help you palliatively control some of the histamine symptoms, right? brain fog, dizziness, vertigo, um, obviously like uticaria, hives, skin stuff. It may control some of that fatigue, but it's not going to fix it. And so you always want to go upstream to the root.